Okay, welcome everybody. Our guest today is Eduardo Feingold, a friend and colleague of mine. Eduardo is a native of Brazil. He got his PhD at the University of Pennsylvania and then for many years was a professor at Yale University before returning to his native Brazil. Um, and his topic today is statistical foundations of common knowledge. So Eduardo, go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. It's a, a great pleasure to, uh, to give a talk at the One World uh, Mathematical Game Theory Seminar. This is a joint work with Omer Tammuz. Wait a second. Okay. So this is um, a paper that looks at um, foundations for common knowledge uh, in terms of learning. Okay. So I don't have to motivate why that's important to this audience. So of course, common knowledge plays a central role, um, you know, in, in game theory. Um, so the question here is, when should we expect common knowledge, okay? Or approximate common knowledge. And uh, the perspective here is that you have a bunch of uh, agents, they're, get, they're getting a lot of data that are informative about um, some sta unknown state of the world, each of them perhaps is individually learning the state, but uh, the question is whether you know, a lot of data will also lead them to commonly learn the state, namely uh, to achieve uh, approximate common knowledge of the state, okay? So we're gonna consider the uh, multi-agent learning framework of Kripps, Ely, Mayleth, and Samuelson. Uh, I'm gonna refer a lot to this paper, so I'm gonna just call it CEMS. And the framework is the following. You have a finite set of agents. They share a common prior about an unknown state. Each agent is privately observing the outcomes of an infinite sequence of IID experiments that are informative about the state, okay? So they will individually they will learn the state, okay? The experiments may be correlated across agents. So it's serial independence, but within a period, my signal can be correlated with Doobie C, okay? So will the agents commonly learn this state? That is, under what conditions will the agents come to have approximate common knowledge of the true state? as they accumulate more and more data. So of course, if you look at the two extreme cases when signals are conditionally independent, conditional on the state, my signal is independent of the other agent's signal. Or when, my, when, or, or when the signals are perfectly correlated, then individual learning implies common learning, okay? So, uh, However, for correlated signals, um, CEMS showed that individual learning does not imply common learning. They have an example uh, where every agent individually learns a state, but they don't commonly learn it, okay? And for finite signal spaces, they have a positive result that individual learning implies common learning. And that's true for uh, you know, regardless of the correlation structure. So of course it's not the infinitude of their example that's driving the failure of common learning per se. It's easy to construct uh, non-trivial examples of infinite signal spaces under which individual learning implies common learning, okay? So a natural question here is what's this, pro what's the important property of finite signals that implies common learning, okay? What's special about finite signals that leads to common learning um, when individual learning obtains, okay? So it's not that we're interested in studying uh, common learning in rich signal spaces just because of a mathematical curiosity. Uh, it's that we cannot tell the, the reason, you know, when common learning obtains and uh, when it does not obtain, when we are in the finite signal uh, world, because in the finite signal world, common learning always obtains. Okay. So one may well suspect that the answer to this question is compactness, some form of compactness, okay? 
uh, this turns out to be partially true, okay? I will uh, explain what this partially true uh, means um, throughout the talk. But the deeper reason uh, lies in a uniform ergodicity condition on the Markov chain of iterated expected beliefs, okay? So um, what's this Markov chain of iterated expected beliefs? This is a Markov chain that was first uh, studied by uh, Dov Summit. Um, it's the, well, you look at, you know, a signal that I got, condition on the signal that I got, okay? Uh, I have a posterior distribution on the other agent signals, right? And conversely, the other agent signals for each signal that he got, he has a posterior about my signals, right? So I can consider the uh, expectation of the other agents uh, posterior about my signals according to my posterior over his signal. So my expected, uh, the expectation of his beliefs about me, okay? So that induces a Markov chain on um, you know on a on an agent uh, signal space si signal space, okay, and properties of this uh, Markov chains of iterated expected beliefs turn out to be uh, essential uh, here. And uh, the key condition that we're going to be studying here is a uniform ergodicity condition on this Markov chain. Of course, uh, uniform ergodicity of expected beliefs is granted in the finite signal case, because if we have only finitely many signals, um, you know, uh, you don't have necessarily ergodicity, but if you restrict attention to each uh, common knowledge component, then, then um, you're going to have, um, you know, uh, uniform ergodicity. That's a property of uh, finite Markov chains. They are always, um, uh, uniformly uh, restricted to uh, ergodic uh, components, they're, they're always going to be um, uniformly ergodic, okay? So uh, along with the concentration inequality for empirical distributions, okay, what are the empirical distributions that matter here? These are the frequencies with which one has received a certain signal. So keep track of um, empirical uh, distributions of signals. These empirical distributions, uh, they satisfy a concentration inequality. Um, and uh, this concentration inequality is the main tool that they use uh, to prove their results. So it's two things that are important here. Uh, um, you know, as far as their proof, uniform ergodicity, Okay, which is granted in the final signal case, and this ability to argue that empirical measures uh, are concentrating uh, around uh, their expectations. Okay, so let me just briefly mention, um, you know, some important works um, related to this mark of chain of iterated expected beliefs. There is a seminal work by Dov Summit where where uh, this Markov chain is used to characterize the existence of common priors uh, on finite type spaces. This was extended by, by Ziv uh, to infinite type spaces. Uh, Alfredo Di Tilio, Duby, and I have uh, ongoing work where use, we use this Markov chain to derive a structure theorem for uh, common, uh, common prior type spaces, which we show to be analogous to the structure of knowledge spaces. Duby, I think present, uh, presented this paper last year um, in, in, in this seminar series. And uh, Golub and Morris, they use this Markov chain to study um, uh, a class of network games, okay? So now let me uh, uh, show you the model. Uh, we're gonna have only two agents here for simplicity. Everything works for finitely many agents, but it's just a little more complicated. Um, to state the results. Uh, we have finitely many states of the world. Um, we have a common prior on this um, finite set. 
um, without loss, I can assume that all states uh, have positive prior. The signal spaces are going to be uh, rather general. They're going to be standard Borel. Okay, so this calligraphic XI is the space of signals of agent I. Okay, and uh, X is going to denote the Cartesian product of the signal spaces. Then we get to the ex statistical experiments. Okay, they're going to be given by a joint distribution uh, over signals. That depends on the underlying state. Okay. And I'm going to denote by pi i the marginal uh, um, um, on, on agent i signals. Okay, so, so basically you get draws uh, period after period from this um, joint distribution pi theta, right? And then agent i learns his coordinate of x, okay, privately. Okay. And the state, of course, is determined at time zero, uh, and it's fixed throughout, and it's determined according to this common graph. Okay. So throughout the talk, I'm going to fix a state that I'm going to call the true state. Okay. Let's let's say it's theta zero. Okay. And I'm going to assume that the marginal uh, over uh, agent I's signals under theta zero is absolutely continuous with respect to the marginal under other states for any uh, for any state under any other state. Okay, so so this assumption is only made for convenience, right? So uh, if I don't have absolute continuity, then learning is even easier. Okay, but it's kind of a nuisance to keep track of these, uh, you know, what happens with inference when you get, when you receive signals in this, um, um, you know, um, in the space where the, the, um, the distributions are mutually singular. So I'm just going to make my life a little easier here and assume this absolute continuity uh, uh, property. Okay. Is it is it clear to everyone that this is this is not a, a key assumption, um, or at least it's one should not expect this to be uh, a key assumption. It, it's just making my life harder. It's harder to learn when you have these full support assumptions. Okay. Just, now, to, make, to, just to make sure, you said that theta theta zero is time zero, or maybe I heard it, but no, you don't mean it. No, it's fixed. no theta zero. Is a uh, is a state that I that it's the true state of the world. Yeah, it doesn't change over time. Yes, okay. No, it doesn't change change over time. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, so I, I had the impression you may have said something. Okay. So every every event that uh, has positive probability under the truth also has positive probability under other other states. Okay, so that's the assumption here. Log likelihood ratios. Then I'm going to denote them by lambda i. It's basically the log likelihood ratio uh, uh, of uh, pi i theta zero with respect to pi i theta. Okay, so this is the I take the marginal uh, over agent i's a signal under the truth, and I consider the ratio between that and the marginal over um, over uh, other states. And um, so you know, I take the log, uh, the log of this density. Okay. Uh, two properties that are important to recall about uh, these log likelihood ratios. One is that their expectation is always no negative. That's the relative entropy. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to be assuming that log likelihood ratios are bounded. I'm not going to even be assuming that that they have um, you know. A finite first moment. The the entropy could be infinity. Uh, just notice that there's no big deal to allow for um, right tails that are that are very very fat, right? Because you know if I if I'm getting a lot of uh, ver uh, um, signals that are um, you know that have uh, very large values of the likelihood ratio that can only help with with learning. What would be problematic would be 
uh, to deal with uh, unboundedness on, on uh, the left tail, okay? But the left tail uh, of a log likelihood ratio has moments of any order, okay? And this is going to help me deal with this possibility of unbounded log likelihood ratios. The negative part, which is the, the, the uh, you know, the sort of the, uh, the part that can create problems for, for learning and for common learning, it has, it has moments of any order. So, so the, the, the left tails are, are never, um, you know, too thick. Okay, so what's the uh, relevant space of outcomes here? I'm going to denote that by omega. That's the space of all sequences of signal realizations. And also, of course, keeping track of the, uh, of the state uh, of the world at time zero. So um, P is going to be basically the distribution uh, induced by, um, you know, these IID experiments, okay? So this is the unconditional distribution over these, um, you know, over outcomes, right? And when I denote, and, and, and when I condition on, 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 on a given state, then, then I'm going to denote that by P theta. Um, it's uh, convenient to introduce random variable uh, notation. So I'm going to denote uh, by XIT the signal that the um, agent uh, receives at time T. Okay? And agent I's information at time T is basically, you know, he observed all these private signals uh, up to time T. So that's going to be denoted FIT. So what's approximate common knowledge? So we're interested in conditions under which the, the, the parameter, the state becomes approximate common knowledge in the long run. So we're gonna be following Maunder and Summit here and measure proximity to common knowledge by, the me, by means of common belief, okay? So Maunder and Summit have shown that common Q belief for Q close to one is the strategically relevant notion of approximate common knowledge. And so it's naturally uh, the, uh, the notion of approximate common knowledge that we'll consider. So, you know, just uh, a brief uh, reminder of uh, common beliefs. So, um, so the event that, um, you know, given an event A, uh, the event that A is common Q belief at time T is the event that uh, at time T, each agent uh, assigns probability at least Q, Q to A, right? And then we can also define uh, the K order uh, uh, Q belief operator. So this is going to be the, um, you know, given an event A, A is K order Q belief if, um, if, um, you know, if if it's K, so if the agents, both agents Q believe that A obtains and that everyone uh, Q minus one uh, order Q believes A. This is a typo, it should be A and not E. So the event that A is common Q belief at time T is the event that there is common Q belief uh, K order common uh, K order Q belief at time T for all Q. So as Q uh, converges to one, this approximates the event that uh, that A is common on. So, sorry about the typo. I changed the notation at some point, and uh, this remains. So it, it should be A all along. Okay, an event is Q evident at time T if uh, whenever. Uh, you know, the event obtains, everyone Q believes it at time T, okay? And um, Maunder and Summit have this very convenient um, uh, characterization of uh, common Q belief, and that's uh, the event that um, A is common Q belief is the largest Q evident event, event that's contained in uh, BTQA. All right, so what's common learning? Common learning is the following property. So under the true state, 
um, we look at the event that the true state is common Q belief at time T. And in fact, not only at time T, but um, you know, at all times large enough, okay? The probability that this happens, the probability that uh, eventually everyone Q believes uh, the true state converges to one, okay? As T goes to infinity. All right, is it clear? So under the true state, the probability that eventually, not eventually, for a given T, the probability that everyone Q believes theta zero uh, after T converges to one as T goes to infinity, and that's true for any Q, okay? So this is like an uh, almost sure notion of common learning. Actually, CEMS, they didn't have this intersection inside here, so it's like they were working with the uh, uh, convergence in probability type of notion of, of uh, common learning, okay? Um, so we realized that actually, you know, all the results hold also for this uh, stronger notion of uh, common learning. So, so we'll state uh, all results in, in terms of, of this notion, okay? Uh, of course, a necessary condition for common learning is that the agents individually learn the state. Right? Individual learning is exactly what you expect, which is that uh, for any Q less than one, uh, the probability that under the truth, everybody Q believes the true state at all times greater than T, right? Converges to one as T goes to infinity. Of course, individual learning is very simple to characterize here. Uh, ind agents individually learn the true state if and only if uh, the state is identifiable. That is, um, you know, the um, uh, other states induce different marginal distributions uh, over signals. Right? Mm -hmm. So. Why might common learning fail? So what could go wrong? Okay. So it's, it's, it's a very simple thing. So let's assume that the state is identified. Okay, the marginal of an agent signal identifies the state. Okay, then it's easy to show that um, not only first, first order beliefs converge to the truth, but agents also learn that the other agent has learned, okay? And that's gonna be true for at any order, okay? So there's going to be, a, given any Q less than one, there's going to be a sequence of critical times, tau n, okay? Such that with probability at least Q under the truth, after tau one, each agent Q believes theta. After time tau, uh, tau two, each agent Q believes that the other agent Q believes theta. After time tau three, each agent Q believes that the other agent Q believes that he Q believes theta and so on and so forth, okay? So for any level of the hierarchy, I can always find a time large enough such that these iterated statements here um, uh, work. But of course there could be a race, okay? Between how uh, high uh, you go in the level of the hierarchies, okay? And, you know, and the time that it takes uh, for, for learning at the K order to settle. So it could be uh, that tau n goes to infinity. So it's a, at least conceivable that Common learning might fail, right? So, and indeed, CEMS have this example where they show that common learning fails, and the kind of thing that you would expect to be um, the sort of canonical uh, signal space to show the failure of common learning would be exactly where this race uh, between, you know, higher order beliefs and and time 
uh, would be you know, very critical. And that would be something that looks like the email game, right? The, the, uh, not the, not the uh, forget about the payoffs, just the information structure of the email game. And indeed their example uh, is built on a variation of that information structure. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna um, provide uh, some sufficient conditions for common learning. Okay. And I'm going to introduce the, this um, Markov chain of iterated expected beliefs. Okay, so how do we do that? So I'm going to fix a, a, a period, consider just one period. And on that period, consider the agent's inference about the private signals of the other player. Okay. And under the true state of the world, suppose that the state of the world is or has already been learned. Okay, and now we're making inference about the signal that the other player has received. Okay, so what matters here is going to be this uh, conditional probability that I'm going to call PI. Okay, and that's the conditional probability under the um, you know the the uh, joint distribution of the signals. Okay with respect to I signal. So that's my posterior over my the other agent's uh, signals, okay? These conditional probabilities are well-defined because I'm uh, working with standard Borel spaces. In other words, PI of X, given X, PI of X is I's belief about J signal when I observes X, okay? Now, uh this this transition kernel okay he acts on functions and acts on probability measures okay so the action on functions is basically you know taking conditional expectations right so you have uh, a conditional uh distribution so given x if i have a function of the other agents um and signals i can just take the um, expectation by operating this uh, PI uh, kernel in this way. So, it, uh, so that's how it acts on functions. And it also acts on measures from the left uh, by basically, you know, given a, uh, an event concerning the other agent signals and given a distribution over my signals, I can consider, uh, you know, the, my average uh, belief um, uh, about that event, um, you know, averaged by this, uh, you know, probability measure mu over my signals. Okay. So notice that if I consider the, uh, if I pre multiply pi, okay, by, um, by my marginal distribution, okay, I get J's marginal distribution. Okay, and that's just because PI uh, is a conditional distribution. So, so this is just, you know, straight from the definition of conditional distribution. Now I'm going to consider um, uh, another kernel, which is the IJ kernel, okay? So basically I'm going to iterate PI and PJ in this way, okay? So given uh, a signal of mine, X, given an event on my signal space, I'm going to consider the other agent's beliefs about this event A, and I'm going to average that according to my signals. So that's the PIJ kernel. It's, it's a kernel on my signal space. It's, you, go, uh, you go back and forth. So this is a this is the mark of chain on agent I's uh, signal space, and if you consider the or, the other uh, order, so instead of one two, you consider two one. That's also going to be a mark of chain on on two's um, um, signal space. Okay, and the marginal of uh, agent I's uh, signal. Uh, is an invariant probability for this uh, iterated uh, uh, belief uh, operator. 
So Markov chains like this, they are kind of special. They are not any kind of Markov chain, okay? They are Markov chains of iterated expectations, okay? And uh, in particular, they're reversible chains, okay? And they're more than reversible chains. They are special reversible chains, okay? So in the statistics literature, uh, it, uh, this, this is uh, called the Gibbs sampler. And Gibbs sampler have been studied, and a lot of things are lots of things are known about these chains. Okay, in particular, um, these chains have very good uh, long run properties. Okay? So there's a theorem of uh, Bergholder, um, and you can also uh, consider Dov Summit's uh, um, study for the finite case. Okay. Uh, that basically uh, says that if you look at the iterated, that, um, you know, the, the, this n step transition, okay, so if you, if you iterate this PIJ operator, okay, so it's basically taking con uh, iterated uh, expected beliefs, this is going to converge to the, um, you know, basically to the prior, okay, conditional on a certain sigma algebra. And this is this basically the common knowledge sigma algebra, okay? This is the sigma algebra of um, evident events, okay? Of course, Burkholder didn't uh, state it in this way, okay? But if you, if you look at his theorem, this is and translated to our framework, uh, this sigma algebra here is basically the sigma algebra of evident events, okay? Uh, all right, so this, um, these um, long run properties of this uh, chain uh, are very, uh, very nice. And in this talk, I'll focus on the case when the common knowledge sigma algebra is trivial, okay? So all events, all common knowledge events are either zero or one. The uh, probability of the uh, um, Common knowledge events uh, is either zero or one. That's kind of an ergodicity uh, condition. Okay, so the uh, um, all the theorems that uh, I'm going to show you are also going to hold if I don't have this condition. But if I impose, but instead I impose my conditions uh, on each uh, common knowledge component. So I'm just going to focus on the case in which, um, um, you know, the, the, uh, this uh, PIJ is ergodic, okay? But that's actually not enough for us. So I'm going to actually make a stronger assumption, not just ergodicity. I'm gonna assume that this Markov chain of uh, expected beliefs is geometrically ergodic. What does that mean? Not only, uh, you know, the PIJs, uh, you know, the n step powers of the PIJ converge to the, to the prior uh, distribution, but it converges in total variation norm, okay? And moreover, it converges at a, with a, with a um, um, geometric rate, okay? So this is not a very strong condition in the sense that lots of examples you can think about uh, most examples you think about are going to have, uh, are going to satisfy um, uh, this property, okay? So um, this is basically a spectral gap uh, condition, okay? So it's, it's almost equivalent to spectral gap, okay? So if you have a, an extra very mild irreducibility assumption, then uh, geometric ergodicity is equivalent to the existence of a spectral gap in L2. So, so I'm going to assume that um, the chains are geometrically ergodic. By the way, geometrically ergo ergodicity per se is not enough, okay? So the counterexample of, um, of um, CEMS does satisfy geometric ergodicity. Their sort of the, their email game type of uh, um, signal structure actually is geometrically ergodic. Okay, so I'm going to need extra assumptions. Okay, but I'm going to be able to phrase these extra assumptions very easily in the geometric ergodic case. 
So I'm going to um, present the results in two cases, okay? Um, two levels of generality. The, the, the unbounded case is when these functions here that control the, um, the convergence rate of the iterated expectations to the uh, prior distribution, when these uh, functions here are unbounded, okay? Uh, or maybe the, um, the negative part of the uh, log likelihood ratio is unbounded, okay? So this is the general case. So we have results for the general case, okay? But I think for sort of uh, for presentation, it's easier to focus first on the bounded case, even though the result for the bounded case is nested on the, on the other result. So I'm going to present this result first because I think uh, it's easier to understand. So let's focus first on the bounded case, okay? So geometric ergodicity with, uh, with the bounded CI function basically is what's called uniform ergodicity, okay? That the convergence of the end step uh, transition to the prior uh, is uniform in the starting point. That is uh, the only rate that it can have uh, for uniform ergodicity turns out to be geometric, okay? So, so geometric ergodicity doesn't play much of a role uh, one, once you have this uh, uniformity property here, okay? There's no way you can converge uniformly without converging geometric, okay? So let's, ass let's assume for now that uh, the individuals, uh, uh, learn the state, okay? And that the uh, this chain is uh, uniformly ergodic, okay? And that also the negative part of the log likelihood ratio is, is bounded, okay? In this case, individual learning implies common learning. So that's the first result, okay? Uniform ergodicity, ergodicity alone is enough and, and you know, a boundedness condition on the on the bad part of the log likelihood ratio, that's enough for um, for common learning. Okay, uh, this immediately implies uh, a corollary for the compact continuous case. Okay, so what's the compact continuous case? Let's suppose that the agents um, um, individually learn the state. The signals are compact metric. And the distribution has a density, uh, the distribu joint distribution over signals has a density with respect to a uh, product measure, okay? And this density is uh, continuous and positive, okay? So, so these densities are sort of bounded away from zero on a compact support. Uh, so if that's the case, then, then we get common learning because in this case, you always get uniform ergodicity. And trivially, the log likelihood ratios are bounded because you know, the, the, uh, these densities are continuous and, and the space is compact, okay? So, so we have a, um, a nice corollary for the compact continuous case. So, so what's the, I, uh, let me just give you the ideas of the proof, okay? For the, for the bounded case. The main ideas are the following. So individual learning ensures that K order mutual learning obtains for any finite K. So for any finite K, you know, uh, agents are going to learn uh, that the, the, the other has learned and, and so on and so forth up to K level. So this is going to happen to happen at any uh, finite order k. Okay. okay. So we have to worry about the tails of these uh, hierarchy uh, hierarchies of degrees. Right. Now, think about um, a high order belief. Okay. A high order belief is different from uh, the iterated expectations. Okay. Iterated expectations. Iterated expected beliefs are, are expected beliefs, 
They're not high order beliefs, okay? They're like Barry centers of random measures. Okay, so you have, uh, let's take, let's take uh, you know, a second order belief. That's a belief about a belief, whereas, uh, you know, expected belief is, is the, is the uh, average uh, belief uh, according to the distribution, right? So it's like an, an expected belief rather than a belief about a belief. Okay, so if we want high order beliefs to converge, it better be the case that these expected beliefs, these Barry centers, they are they are um, in the tail of the hierarchy that they are um, you know that they are um, not escaping. Okay, that they, that we have some manageability over these tails of the hierarchies, at least in expectation. This is what uniform ergodicity gives you. Okay. Imply, it implies that I's expectation of J's expectation of, of J's empirical distribution, let's, let's consider uh, an agent, um, an agent's uh, empirical distribution of a signals, okay? And let's take the iterated expectations of it, N times, okay? So that's going to be uh, close to the prior for N large. Okay? That's not enough because learning, common learning is not about expectations, it's about high order beliefs. So we need to be able to prove that, uh, that uh, beliefs are concentrated, high order beliefs are concentrated um, around their very centers, their, their expectations, okay? Um, and it turns out that uh, if you have compactness, okay, you can prove concentration, prop uh, concentration property uh, with respect to uh, a metric that metrizes weak, this, uh, weak convergence, okay? So what's this com uh, concentration property that one can prove? That as T goes to infinity, agent I's belief that J's empirical measure is close to I's expectation of it converges to one uniformly on the event that I's empirical measure is close to I's marginal distribution. So concentration of empirical measures works uh, when I have compact signal spaces. But I don't make the assumption that uh, the spaces are compact. All I assume is that you have uniform ergodicity and, um, and uh, bounded log likelihood ratios. It doesn't matter because I can always embed the signal spaces on the Mertens and Zamir universal type space. What universal type space am I talking about? I'm talking about the universal type space over log likelihood ratio values, okay? So it's, it's the basic space of uncertainty that I consider to build this hierarchies of beliefs is the values of the log likelihood ratios, okay? I'm assuming that they're bounded. So this is basically some, um, you know, a bounded space in the new, uh, a, a bounded subset of a Euclidean space. And I, I, I build the returns as a mere hierarchy over it. Okay, and I can embed the signal spaces on on the terms and Zemir, okay, and basically um, get rid of everything that's irrelevant for inference and for common inference, right? The only thing that matters for inference is log likelihood ratios. The the only thing that matters for uh, inference about inference is is, is beliefs about log likelihood ratios and so on. So for embedding in returns is a mere gets rid of uh, uh, all these irrelevant um, uh, aspects of uh, signals, okay? And, um, and this space is compact, okay? So, the, so I can use the compactness of Mertens and Zamir to get, um, to get uh, you know, the concentration uh, property that I need, um, to 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 carry out the um, um, you know the the um, um, to carry out the proof. So that's the idea. You need uniform ergodicity. You need uh, concentration. For concentration, you need compactness. But but you know you get compactness for free uh, by embedding signals in Mertens and Zamir when log likelihood ratios are bounded. Okay. But of course, the really interesting case is the unbounded case. So let me tell you more about it, okay? 
So now I'm going to go back to the more general assumption of geometric ergodicity, not, not uniform ergodicity, okay? So now uh, it can take longer and longer for the end step transitions to get close to, uh, to the prior, uh, you know, depending on where you are uh, in the signal space. So I need to strengthen this condition. Just this condition alone is not enough. As I mentioned, uh, CEMS um, counterexample satisfies geometric ergodicity. Okay. And to strengthen this condition, I'm going to need to use a language um, that makes sense uh, for geometric, uh, geometrically ergodic um, chains. Okay. And I'm going to need these notions. Two notions, one is the notion of small sets and the other is the notion of Lyapunov functions. So what's a small set? A small set is a set with the property that uh, transitions from it, okay, uh, work as if you were, um, you know, considering a, um, um, you know, a convex combination um, between um, a measure that's uh, st uh, uh, state independent, okay, and something else, but with probability at least epsilon on this measure uh, independent uh, transition, okay? So, and this need not be true for n equal one, but if it's true for some n sufficiently large, then, then I, I say that this set is small, okay? So, uh, for example, if you have an irreducible chain on a countable um, uh, state space, then uh, all finite sets are small, okay? Because you can iterate the chain, uh, you, know, so, uh, you know, you can take a sufficiently high power of the chain, and then, um, you know, the first, um, you know, K sub-block of the matrix is going to be all positive. Once that happens, um, you know you get this condition. Okay? So these are this is the notion of small sets. If it's if the chains are countable, if it's countable to single spaces, then small just means um, uh, 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 all finite uh, sets are small. There are finite sets. There's uh, small sets that may be infinite, but definitely all finite sets are small. Okay? Uh, uniform ergodicity turns out to be equivalent to the property that the whole space is small, okay? This is a well-known result in Markov chain theory. It's called uh, Dublin's theorem. Now that I have this notion of small set, I'm going to introduce the notion of Lyapunov uh, functions, okay? This is going to be a pair of functions, one for each agent, okay? What's a Lyapunov function? It's a function um, that has the following property. When I look at the sufficiently high uh, sublevel set of I's Lyapunov function, and if I'm out of it, okay, so this is, I'm, 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 uh, my value of my Lyapunov function is very high, okay, then my expectation of J's Lyapunov function, okay, is uh, at most some uh, coefficient rho times the value of my Lyapunov function. So Lyapunov functions sort of contract when you're in, on the edges of your um, signal space, okay? That's basically, you know, how you should be interpreting Lyapunov functions. Um, you know, uh, complements of sublevel sets are basically um, uh, um, the edge of the, of, the, of the signal space. And when you are there, there is a force that's pushing you to the to the center of the of the uh, of the space, um, okay. And then once you're in the center of the space, um, then you know the expectations, the conditional expectations of these Lyapunov functions are 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 bounded, okay. And the other property that I need is that sublevel sets of these Lyapunov functions are small, okay in the sense that uh, we talked about uh, before. So, so it could be 
that uh, in an accountable framework that they are basically you know finite uh, finite sets. Okay, uh, from Markov chain theory, we know that the following conditions are equivalent. Geometric aggredicity is equivalent to the existence of uh, Lyapunov functions and an irreducibility condition. Okay, I'm not going to be talking much about irreducibility. It's very similar to the notion for countable Markov chains, but it has you know, slightly, uh, slight modification. Um, so basically, geometric aggredicity is equivalent to the existence of Lyapunov pairs. So my strengthening of uh, geometric ergodicity is going to be a condition, a property on the Lyapunov pairs. This, this is how I'm going to phrase my condition, okay? By the way, it's always, in the geometric ergodic case, it's always possible to choose uh, Lyapunov functions that dominate any given um, square integrable function. If, I, if it's geometrically ergodic, that not only there is uh, a Lyapunov function, but I can always pick one that dominates any given uh, square integrable function. And this is a useful thing because I wanna pick a Lyapunov function that dominates, uh, you know, the, the, that dominates the, um, the um, negative part of the log likelihood equation, okay? And what's nice about the Lyapunov functions is that they, they are exactly what controls the rate of convergence. That coefficient that I call CI, okay, is exactly given up to a constant by, by, Lyapunov, by a Lyapunov function VI, okay? In particular, convergence is always uniform on any sublevel set of uh, the Lyapunov function. So here's the main result. I only have five minutes, so let me give you uh, the main result. Main result is this, suppose that the agents individually learn the true state and, uh, and the uh, chain of expected beliefs is geometrically ergodic. Uh, so we know that the Lyapunov function exists, right? And we know that it can be chosen to dominate the uh, square of the log likelihood ratio because, uh, sorry, the negative part of the log likelihood ratio because that has uh, moments of any order, okay? So I can always choose a Lyapunov function with this condition. So the condition that's going to really have a bite is this extra condition here, okay? It's a complicated condition. So let me tell you what this is, okay? Basically, this is the expectation Okay, so let's okay. So let, let's look at what's inside uh, this integral here. Okay, so this is given a um, signal realization for me. Okay, I'm going to consider that um, the event that you got a signal uh, with Lyapunov value much bigger, okay, than rho times my uh, Lyapunov value. By the way, this should be I, not J, otherwise this doesn't make any sense, okay? Sorry about the typo. This is VI, not VJ. So I have a Lyapunov value for my uh, signal realization, and you got a Lyapunov value that I don't know what it is, okay? And R is very large. And let's look at the event that you got uh, a Lyapunov value that's much larger relative to this uh, value that I got, okay? Even multiplied by a log, okay? Um, so I want this uh, quantity here to be integrable, okay? That is, uh, it's a condition on, on the tails of these things here, okay? How they, um, how they go to zero um, when when um, you know when x uh, is is going to infinity, in, or or the value of um, the Lyapunov function of x is 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 going to infinity. So when I get something extreme 
okay? Uh, I want uh, the probability that you got something um, um, even extremer to be very, very, very low. Okay? So it's a, it's a speed of convergence type thing. It's a, it's a, it's a condition on, on, a, on a tail, uh, so to speak. So under this condition here, uh, the agents can only learn the true state. So in the Gaussian case, okay, so what's the Gaussian case? I only have three minutes, so I'm just gonna do the Gaussian case and then, and then conclude. So let's so suppose that the signal distribution is a bivariate normal, okay, uh, with mean vector, uh, you know, which is given exactly by uh, the unknown state and convariance matrix, uh, you know, there's correlation rho and unit variances. Let's suppose that the true state is state zero. Okay, so it's easy to show that this, uh, you know, the chain here, the uh, iterated expected beliefs chain is geometrically ergodic. And the Lyapunov function is, ex is exactly uh, the, uh, the absolute value of, of the signal. The log likelihood ratio here is basically, you know, the signal plus a constant. Okay. So what's the um, conditional expectation, uh, the conditional distribution of J signal given I's signal? That's going to be uh, a normal distribution centered at rho times my signal, and it has constant variance. So if you calculate, okay, that integral there, you can show that it's bounded by the, um, the variance, okay, of, you know, um, uh, of my um, a conditional distribution, okay? And since in the Gaussian case, the variance uh, of the conditional distribution doesn't depend on the realization, this is uniformly bounded, okay? And our condition uh, works, okay? Our condition holds. Therefore, in the Gaussian case, common learning obtains, okay? We have a slightly sharper result, but it's a condition that is uh, much harder to state. So I don't think it's uh, very interesting, especially if I don't have time to, to, to explain it. Uh, and with this sharper result, I can also prove a, uh, a converse, okay? That whenever this, you know, uh, slightly weaker condition fails, then I can always find likelihood ratios that are bounded such that in this model, uh, there will be individual learning, but um, uh, common learning will fail. So it's it's not an if and only if, but it's almost if and only if in the sense that uh, if the condition fails, then I can find likelihood ratios for which uh, there won't uh, there won't be uh, there will be individual learning, but not common. Okay, so it's a, it's a, so it's a sharp sharp condition. Okay. So uh, maybe I'm over time. So let me just take me perhaps 30 seconds to conclude. So uh, the main takeaways are that, um, you know, if you read the CMS paper, then you learn that finite signals lead to common learning, um, infinite signals don't. So you may suspect that the answer to when common learning obtains has to do with compactness, it's not quite that. What we show is that the deeper reason lies in the notion of uniform ergodicity. Even though our general result doesn't have the assumption of uniform ergodicity, um, we, uh, we basically have a condition uh, that there are arbitrarily large, arbitrarily evident events, okay, on which uh, the Markov chain uh, converges uniformly to the prior. So it's not uniform ergodicity per se, but it's the uh, ability to find um, large sets of events, the events that have very high uh, prior probability, which are also arbitrarily evident, okay? 
on which there is uniform agreement. So that's that's uh, the the essence of our result. With that, I conclude. Very good. Thank you. Are there any questions from the audience? No? That is perfectly clear. Why should there be any questions? Right? OK, I don't know what to say then, um, if that's the case. And then we will thank uh, um, Eduardo and uh, remind everyone that we will meet again in a couple of weeks. Hoping to see you then. Great. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.